all the stack bar charts. They are a good way to show totals across categories and also show the components of these totals. You hit two birds with one stone. But there is one problem. They become quickly overcrowded. Because of this reason I didn't use to like stack bar charts in the past, I just couldn't make a good use case out of them. I could make it work with like two, three subcomponents, but not more than that. I avoided stack bar charts. But times are changing. I did some research and tried to come up with some solutions for specific use cases in Power BI. I want to show you two ideas I came up with. Let's take this column chart. The columns show the total sales across the month for one year. And the stacks are the different products which make up the sales volume. First of all, it's confusing. There are too much things going on and it's hard to make a sense out of it. When I look at it, my eyes jump from one place to the other. I can't really decide where to look at. The numbers are competing with each other. All the colors are saturated and competing as well. It tires the mind very quickly. So let's get rid of this clutter first. First, I'm gonna change the canvas background. I like darker designs and this is a background I made with Figma in another video, so I'm just gonna reuse it. Then I remove the visual background, then the borders and the grid lines. I also change the colors of the total labels and the axis colors. I make the total labels a bit lighter and I push the axis labels in the background with a darker color. Then I change the colors of the stacks. I use the toned down color palette where the colors are more in harmony. They are less contrasty and attention grabbing. Since we have the values directly on the columns, I remove the Y axis. And I will also remove the stack data labels. It is just too much information and hard to process. We can't answer too many questions at the same time. And finally, I make the gaps between the columns smaller, so it just gives a better flow over time. I also make the whole chart smaller because we will need more space. And I want to move the legend from the top to the left side so we can read it along with the column stacks in the same way aligned. I tried it with the native legend of the visual but it doesn't work very well because the order is in reverse. Instead of that I removed the legend and created a simple text box with colored labels. It's not dynamic and I lose some interactivity with the legend but I don't really need it here anyway. I also removed the title and move it into a text box. And I also want to move the total labels from the top of the columns to the bottom of the columns. This option is not available in the column chart visual, so I have to work around. I copy the column chart, make the bars transparent with the measure. I put the total labels on the base and remove the x-axis from the original chart. For me, this alignment makes it easier to read and compare the values and also my eyes don't have to jump between the month names and the sales values. We can compare the total sales well. We can also compare the stacks of the bottom product across different months because they have a common baseline. But beyond that, we don't get much more insights what's there. Depending on our focus, we can try different solutions. So we have to decide what we want to focus on. What are we interested in? In the first solution, we want to see the total sales over time as we have it here. But we also want to see the trend of the different components. We can somehow expand the stacks so each of them has their own baseline. We can do it with small multiples and we want to be able to switch between views. What we currently see is going to be our stacked view. I copy the column chart and then I group the legend and the original column chart together and hide them. Then I turn the copy of the column chart into a small multiple. I remove everything between the charts, the text labels and the borders. It kind of gives the feeling that the stacks has been expanded, so there is nothing in between them. I add the legend in separated text boxes. And what about the numbers? It would be nice to show the labels directly, but if I put them on the top of the columns, it looks very messy. The labels are all around the place. If I move them to the baseline, they just won't be visible because the columns are too small. This could maybe work with horizontal bar charts, but not here. What could work is to have the labels below the columns, like we had with the total cells. But either you have to make multiple matrices or just having one matrix with huge row padding. But this is limited at 20 pixels, so this is the largest size you can get with it. So I'm just gonna ditch the direct values and hide them in a tooltip. Now it's more important to see the trends clearly. I open another page and create a tooltip. And then I copied and rearranged the original chart here. 
If you check it, it doesn't work well though, because the transparent column chart with the label doesn't work when the columns are too small. So I remove the total labels from the transparent column chart and keep only the month values and put a matrix instead of it. I just didn't format it so it looks the same. And then I added the product names in a multi-row card for a title. And it looks the same, but we don't have this visibility issue. So we are done with the Unstack view. And now I want to create a switch between the two views. I used simple buttons and bookmarks for that. This is how it works in action. Now we can see the total sales trend over time and also compare the months. And we can do the same for the subcomponents. What I think is missing to be able to compare the subcomponents within one category, so within one month. And inspired by the tooltip, I thought it would be cool to show it also this way. So I copied the tooltip, turned the column charts into bar charts, I removed the month names, turned the horizontal matrix with the total values into a vertical matrix and add the product names. Then I just adjust everything and make it smaller. I also make the padding between the bar charts smaller, so it kind of gives a feeling that they belong to a whole. And finally, I add the month name in a card as a title. This is how it works. I think it works very well. <laughs> I want to show another solution, so let's get back to the beginning. <laughs> In the second solution, instead of expanding the stacks, we want to leverage the baseline and be able to switch the focus between the different products. We can highlight the baseline and select with a slicer which product we want to put there. First, I'm gonna change up the colors. It's hard to highlight one color with these colors, so I want to use a color scale instead. I tried with the grayscale and the blue highlight, but I think the scale is blending in too much with the background because they are both gray. And also the lighter scales are too light and take away focus from the highlights. And I just generally don't like it too much. Instead of that, I take this green color from the original colors and generate a scale out of it. And I think a white highlight would work well here. The green scale also doesn't work very well for the legend labels on this background. So I'm just gonna make them gray and keep the highlight on the selected product. I think what's a bit confusing is that the total labels are below the column charts and you can't instantly tell if it belongs to the totals or to the highlighted product. So this time I move back the totals to the top of the columns and I put the selected product sales below the columns. And I think in this case the percentage of total sales of the selected product would work well. So I replace the product sales with the relative product sales. The challenge with this solution is to find a way to switch the highlight from one product to the other with a slicer. And at the same time, this slicer should put the product on the baseline. So also the sorting should be changed by the selection. If we want to move the products, it means that we need multiple sorting orders. It's quite complicated. You either have to use a cross join table and connect it with a bridge table to the original table or use multiple bookmarks. A better idea to do it is, instead of moving the products themselves, we can match different sales to the products based on the selection. The product sorting stays the same and the sales values change instead. How it works is that we create a disconnected table with six unnamed products and the sorting. And then with the measure, these unnamed products get a different sales in variables depending on the currently selected product. At the end, the measure returns the calculated sales to the six products. I add the measure to the column chart and we need the same measure but for the legend labels. I copy the measure and simply replace the calculated sales with the product names. So far we had the legend in a text box but we cannot put a measure to it so I replace it with a matrix. I remove its style, adjust the colors and this is how it works. First I wanted that the legend is the slicer at the same time, so if you select a product there, it puts it to the baseline and gets highlighted. But I couldn't pull it off because there is no conditional formatting in the slicers and with buttons and bookmarks it just doesn't worth the effort. If you have some ideas for that, feel free to put it in the comments. So I keep the slicer separately as it is, but I think it looks weird on the side next to the legend, like the same values run twice but in different order. Let's move it to the top instead and align it with the header title. Here we can also use the tooltip from the first solution and show the subcategories in each month. 
I copy the tooltip and adjust the colors. And since we have relative values in the main chart, I think it's a good idea to put it also here. Then following the same structure, we can put the totals on the top instead of the bottom. For this, I created a text box and put the sales as a dynamic value. In the chart, if you look at it, I think it's really easy on the eyes that everything is aligned in the same way. If you are interested in building these solutions on your own, just go and check these videos out.